similar, yeah. similar to like Clarissa the Shields, for for Clarissa Shields rather. Uh, I'll say I gotta ask, why do you say Clarissa the Shields? You've you've said that multiple times now. It's just a habit. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. I thought there was a special naming of hers or something like that. Nah, it's like it's. I I've, I think it's because of like going to school. You I met more people with the last name the Shields than the Shields. So gotcha. Yeah, so like uh but Clarissa Shields, she actually debuted uh an MMA over the weekend. Well, actually, when our last when episode 59 came out that Thursday, she uh repeated so a week ago. Um she actually won. She won her first MMA, I think it was with PFC. PFL. 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 Yeah, she, she went in and uh fought, if I'm not mistaken, the woman's name was Brittany Elkin. Had a little um, trouble in the first two rounds, but eventually came back in the third and um, won the TKO finish. I, I think it's really cool for Clarissa Shields to do that, you know what I mean, to make the transition over and actually catch a win. Regardless if she had some adversity in her first fight or not, I think it's pretty dope. And not only that, I think the adversity shows that she can actually, you know, weather a little bit of a storm. And mind you, she's new to this, you know what I mean? So it's not to be unexpected that this is going to happen. I, I think, one, it couldn't happen to a better woman. And two, it couldn't happen in a better way. I think if she came in, knocked the young lady out, there's going to be a lot of criticism of like, oh, well, she she beat a three and six. Well, now she's three and seven. You know, Mick Dojo, brown belt, Brazilian jiu-jitsu lady who's been fighting for 12 years, but getting spanked for a majority of it. And she just knocked her out. She's a bomb. She was da, da, da. And don't get me wrong. The young lady was brought in to do a job, but I think that Clarissa losing the first two rounds, kind of, you know, getting out grappled and stuff like that. It's a wake up call to her and all to the diehard boxing purist that like, Hey, she's lucky that she lost two rounds to somebody who wasn't that good versus if she fought Kayla Harrison, she probably would have got finished in the first round. So that's something I felt like Clarissa needed to, for her to realize like, okay, yes, I made some mistakes because she admitted it that she made mistakes in that fight. Yes. I made mistakes. Yes. I knew da da da, but she was able to, she was able to overcome that and get the TKO finish in that third round, which is good because it just shows like she's not going to panic in bad situations, which is very important for her because she will be put in a lot of bad situations moving forward because she's at a disadvantage from coming in so late to the game and fighting at a level like the PFL. And yes, I know to the casual fan out there, old, oh, she didn't fight in the UFC, bro. Uh, we get that. <laughs> the PFL is still at a higher level than what most people come in who just start doing MMA. You know, people do amateur fights before they start fighting at the professional level. She just jumped straight in to one of the top MMA leagues. So I'm I'm happy with Clarissa Shields win. I think her losing two rounds is actually a benefit for her because it's a learning experience of what she needs to go back. Now here's where my concern is with Clarissa Shields. Will she give up boxing to excel at MMA? Because if she's like, well, I'm just doing this for like cash grab fights and like showcase fights, then cool. She doesn't have to give up boxing for that. But if she wants to be elite and then maybe one day fight Amanda Nunes at some, at, at 145 which that might be a challenge because Clarissa fights at 155. She has to dedicate her life to MMA moving forward. And I'm not talking about what she does outside the gym. I'm talking about like her, she's going to have to give up boxing because you're not going to be able to beat the Amandas of the world. Valentina Shevchenko's, Eva Kayla Harrison, Chris Cyborg's and MMA if she does not stop her boxing. And I'm not talking about boxing as far as training. I'm talking about boxing as far as like, hey. Competition. Right. Seven mm-hmm. months, I'm training for a fight in MMA. Then the next seven months, I'm training for a boxing fight. That 
might derail her because all the top women in MMA have world-class grappling. And that's obviously her weak area that she needs to improve on. And don't get me wrong, yeah, she won't panic in bad situations, but she could still lose. And those women I just mentioned, they could dominate her. Like, you don't have to panic or not. We're still going to dominate you. So I think, like, it's promising for Clarissa. I hope that she continues in her MMA journey if that's what she decides to do. And I'm going to root for her all the way because she's doing it the right way. She's not doing it like the pussy-ass boxers that's trying to, (laughs) you know, bait the MMA fighters that come to the boxing ring so they can fight at the limited, rigged Queensberry rule set. So shouts out to Clarissa. You know, you got a fan of me and keep showing how these pussy ass boxers should be doing. (laughs) To what you have said, I do agree that she'll have to, if she wants to pursue MMA as a real career down the line, I do believe, I agree there where she has to give up boxing at some point. And if she were to, it wouldn't be too surprising because she would be leaving as the, the best fighter in the world. So she would be the best, she would be leaving as the best fighter in the world to go try something else. So it wouldn't be too surprising. And she's really young. So she's only like 25, 26, I believe. So she would, she wouldn't have, I don't see her having as of right now, from what I've seen, and it could always change depending on her progression. I don't see her being like the elite MMA fighter. But I do see where she she has the capabilities to to learn from her experience in the cage so far. Because like you said, the takedowns was uh it that was like a huge factor. I think it probably could have stopped it would it was stopping her. Uh, it was playing more of a fact than what she probably was prepared for. She was still able to hold her own, and eventually she was able to make something out of out of something. It, for someone like Clarissa the Shields, Clarissa Shields, it's um, I think it'd be a little hard for her to leave the sport. I think for her, it's just a cash grab because she even like I think she's even came out and said she gets paid. She makes more money doing this MMA fight than she has doing boxing and definitely coming off of a win. I mean, we've seen <clears throat> we've seen where Logan Paul's gotten. Yeah. So you actually have someone that's a real boxer. You never know. Definitely if definitely if it's like she's making the most money she's ever made. Do a quick a quick cash grab and get up out of there. I mean, the way I see it is like I think she has the right to go ahead and try MMA if she wants. And if she really wants to, like you said, wow, she's gonna have to really just dedicate more time because that's just what it would take to compete at a high level, you know, with the other females at that weight class. So, I mean, shouts out to her. Um, I hope she has more success 